This video demonstrates methods for embedding individual otoliths. The entire process requires two to three days and will produce individual molds to be sectioned and used for age determination. All pouring of epoxy resin is done under the fume hood. Unlike the mass production method for embedding otoliths, this method uses smaller silicone trays with 12 wells each. There are shallow and deep well trays which are used for small and large otoliths respectively. The first step is to make sure the molds are clean and free of any old resin from previous pours. For this you can just use your fingernail or any small tool to scrape off the old dried resin. Using a small paintbrush, paint the wells with free coat, a releasing agent. The free coat is stored under the fume hood with the epoxy resin and hardener. Open the can and apply a thin layer of the agent sparingly in the wells of the molds. Be sure to use protective gloves when handling the releasing agent and the epoxy. All of the tools and materials for embedding are located in the embedding kit. Get a small plastic cup out of the kit, place it on the scale under the large fume hood and tear the scale. The epoxy and hardener are mixed in a 5 to 1 mixture. Usually 30 milliliters of epoxy will be mixed to 6 milliliters of hardener and will fill a tray. For this embedding process, we use a combination of Araldite GY502 epoxy resin and Aradur 956-2 hardener as it results in a clear, hard mold. Any hard epoxy can be used, but we use this particular one in our embedding. Be aware that the mixing ratio will change depending on the type of epoxy being used. Add the epoxy first, taking care when pouring it into the cup. If you happen to spill any epoxy or hardener, it can be cleaned up with the acetone located in the fume hood. Next, we add the hardener, so we tear the scale again and add the hardener carefully. Try to be as exact as you can with the measurements. Once the hardener and the epoxy are mixed, use the timer and stir the mixture at a steady pace with a wooden stick for about three to four minutes. Throw away the stir stick in the waste bin and fill the small sonicator with distilled water. Place the cup of resin in the water and weigh it down with a heavy object. Be sure that no water gets inside the cup as water will ruin the epoxy. Sonicate the epoxy for 15 minutes to remove air bubbles. While the epoxy is sonicating, you can remove the otoliths from their envelopes and mark the cores. Marking the cores makes it easier to see where to line up the, the cut when sectioning the, uh, the samples. In this example, we're embedding redfish. Use a pencil, not a pen, to mark the cores. The marking can be done under a dissection scope as seen in previous videos. You can still use broken otoliths in this embedding process as well. Typically a break will happen right around the middle, but as long as you can still mark the core, a broken otolith can be put back together and embed it the same way as you would a whole otolith. When the cores are marked, make a label for each otolith. This can be done in Excel or simply written on a strip of paper. 
include species and an identifier such as the sample number. Then you can simply cut the labels which will be used in the wells once the epoxy hardens. When the sonicator is finished, remove the cup and use a Kim wipe to wipe off all the excess water so it doesn't drip into the wells. Water will cause the epoxy to turn cloudy and interfere with the setting process. Pour some epoxy into each of the wells up to the first ridge. You can also pour a small amount of epoxy onto a piece of parafilm to dip the otoliths in before placing them in the wells. This will help reduce the buildup of air bubbles around the otolith when it is placed in the epoxy. You will have a working time of about 15 minutes to add the otoliths to the molds before the resin begins to set. We recommend that you work with small batches of resin at a time or enough for one plate of 12 molds so that you don't have any issues with the resin setting too quickly. Place the label for each otolith in the side of the well. Dip the otolith into the epoxy on the parafilm and use a probe to push epoxy into the sulcus. Dipping the otoliths into the epoxy before putting it in the well is intended largely to avoid getting air bubbles in the sulcal groove. You don't want any air bubbles in, around, or near the sulcus of the otolith. Place one otolith in each well and cover with the remainder of the resin up to the top of the well. Use the small probe included in the kit to position the otolith and to remove any bubbles surrounding the otolith. If necessary, the probe can be used to move the bubbles to the side of the well where they are out of the way. Also, a disposable pipette can be used to create a vacuum to pull trapped air bubbles out from around the sulcus. Once you're sure there are no bubbles around the otolith, place the mold under the fume hood to set for two to three days. Be sure to wipe any tools clean with ethanol or acetone when finished. After three days of setting, check to see if the otoliths are ready. To determine if the resin is hardened, Lightly touch the molds with a probe or other instrument. The resin should not be tacky and you should not be able to push the probe into the resin. If the resin is hard, the embedded otoliths are, can be removed and are ready for sectioning.